All right, hey guys, welcome back to another hopefully short presentation. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the utility of preparation and why it is important for our health and fitness goals. So as we all know, the saying goes, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. But why? Um, you know, it, I'm hopefully it is an inherent answer, but planning ultimately will allow us to control variables and ideally increase our likelihood of success in any, in any endeavor. So it doesn't really matter what we're doing, planning is probably gonna be a good idea. We very rarely, hopefully, start things just willy-nilly, right? So think of buying a house, for example. For most people, you don't just wake up and go, oh, today I'm gonna to buy a house, and off you go, um, you know, empty your bank account, and next thing you know, you've got a house. Instead, it usually requires some significant planning. So we, work out where we want to buy, what the requirements of the house are. We start to then save our money to be able to afford whatever the value of that house is and so on. And it's, it takes years sometimes to get to that end goal of actually purchasing a house. Another example, think of Elon Musk. One day he didn't just say, I'm going to launch a car into space and do it. He's probably said that, you know, five, ten years before he actually achieved it. Um, you know, again, took years of planning, preparation to actually achieve that goal. So some of the benefits of planning, we're going to just like kind of break these down and then I'll elaborate a little bit. Is So one, we get a sense of direction and organization in what we are doing. Number two, we can focus our attention on our objectives and desired results. Three, we're actually able to anticipate any problems and we can plan again accordingly for those. We can also set up some guidelines for decision making. Now that's a really important one. So let's go back to the top. So the sense of direction and organization, right? So ultimately by planning and preparing in advance, you know what to do, right? So if we, for training purposes and diet, if we are planning our training and diet phases at different time scales, it makes the actual application a lot easier. Right, And we can be a little bit more confident that we are heading in the right direction and we are going to be getting the results that we want. So for, again, training and diet purposes, so we plan in both a macro scale, a meso and a micro scale, right? So macro being a whole, like a year or an extended period of time, meso being a you know, slightly shorter period of time, around a month typically, and then a micro cycle being a daily scale. Right, so when we do go and plan, you know, a year, a whole year in advance, we say this is what we want to achieve for a year, and we go, okay, to achieve that, what do we need to do on a monthly scale, on a mesocycle scale, and then we can build those together, and then we can go, okay, with those objectives in the mesocycle, how do we achieve that through our microcycles, and we can reverse engineer it to make sure that what we're doing on the daily and the monthly adds up to what we're trying to achieve you know, on a longer term, larger time scale. Okay, so it allows us to strategically design our decision, right, or strategically design our training and nutrition to achieve the longer term goal, okay? The second point, focusing our attention on objectives and desired results. So instead of making things up as we go, we can actually just focus on executing whatever was already planned and achieving the desired outcome at each stage. Hopefully, because you planned, you're confident and you can go, okay, I know that whatever I need to do, if I do that, I'm going to get closer to that goal, which, you know, takes a lot of that kind of mental stress and pressure off you if, you're, if you have that, you know, confidence in your decisions. So if your plan is not well thought out, you might be more likely to second guess it, right? And that in turn is going to delay your progress. So Mike Isratel. Uh, from Renaissance Periodization, he actually put up a great post the other day uh, about training and programming. And basically, he said, write your training program, look over it, critically analyze it, assess it, ask yourself, does this actually align with whatever I'm trying to achieve? Is this a good plan on paper? And if it is, then just go and execute it and don't deviate unless it's absolutely necessary say you know some confounding variable like an injury or something pops up otherwise you just go for it the third one anticipate problems right this is obviously a really really 
big benefit of planning, right? If you don't plan and something happens, right? You might just make some random decision that doesn't actually align with whatever you're trying to do. If you're planning and then something happens and you go, okay, well, when this situation comes up, then what, right? And we can start to build backup plans and backup, backup plans, right? And we can actually overcome and prepare for things to go wrong because that's what happens in life. So though, in my opinion, those who pay the closest attention to and are aware of the things that can go wrong in life, in anything, right? Be it relationships and their training and their nutrition, you know, driving to work. If, if you're more aware of the things that can go wrong, that can potentially slow or derail progress or whatever your objective is at that point in time, you can plan ahead and you can prepare and you can do everything in your power to avoid being in a situation where you might come up against those problems. So again, establishing plans and then backup plans and understanding how you're going to make certain decisions in certain situations, if they do arise, is going to be a very important skill and tactic to achieving longer term success in really any endeavor. So think of it like this. So when you're going grocery shopping, if you're hungry, right? If you have already written down your shopping list and you just go, yep, sweet. I know I have to buy these 10 things. You go to the shops, you're hungry, but that's okay. Cause you have a piece of paper that says this, 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 and then you're out. All right. That's great. You're probably going to be a lot more likely to avoid buying things that you don't necessarily need that might derail your diet. Whereas if you don't have that plan, you go when you're hungry, then you're going to end up with everything in aisle two. And then that, has the potential to then derail your progress because you know now you have potentially food around the house that you didn't actually need or want, didn't plan for, and now you know we're gonna slow down whatever your diet goal is, unless maybe that's in line with whatever your diet goal is. Someone did ask specifically about like if you're going out to a friend's house or eating out, um, you know, a meal. It's like you just need a plan. Again, it's like if you know that where you're going for dinner, right? You're going to X restaurant. You can go, oh, okay, I can look at their menu and I can plan this out and I can say, all right, well, I'm going to have this on the menu and you can track that, prepare it, make it work in your day, however that looks in practice. And then off you go. And you don't have to stress about it. You don't have to worry about it. You have confidence that you have made a good decision. Even if there is a little bit of a you know error margin, that's okay. You've probably accounted for it uh, at least in some capacity by actually planning in advance. Right? Same goes if you're eating at a friend's house. Hopefully, you know, you're good enough friends with the people that you could be like, hey, what are we having for dinner? I'm trying to prepare because this goal is important to me, whatever it is. Um, hopefully, they tell you. You can roughly prepare and plan, you know, maybe account for the fact that you can't be entirely sure. So maybe you add in, you know, 10, 20% extra on whatever you're tracking or, you know, however you're accounting for it. And then off you go. You don't have to worry about it too much rather than go, Oh, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, so I'm just going to try and guess and randomly, you know, have a stab in the dark and then you show up at dinner and it's nothing what you had prepared for and everything goes out the window and all of a sudden, you know, we can't progress at all because, you know, it's just too hard. Um, so yeah, it can help you overcome problems that are there known and unknown. Um, so again, planning for the win. Last key benefit that I want to talk about is just, it offers guidelines for decision-making. So planning offers a systematic approach to making decisions. Surprise, surprise. So once we have established guidelines, how decisions will be made, we can remove emotion, right? If you're planning for tomorrow, today, it's like you don't have to deal with any of the problems that are coming, you know, in the moment, right? And you'll be able to think a little bit more rationally, a little bit more clearly, and you'll be able to hopefully make a better decision, right? So if I go today, I'm going to have this for breakfast and then you go, Oh, but maybe you want that for breakfast, but we have this food in the house, but this, and all of a sudden it becomes really challenging to actually make a decision. Whereas if maybe the night before you go, Oh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this for breakfast. I'm going to train at 10 o'clock easy, 
right? You've already thought about it. You've already put in that hard work and now all you have to do is go and actually execute, which makes things a lot easier in actually adhering to whatever your goal is. And then if you can do that over time, it makes achieving those end results a lot more efficient and effective, right? And also guidelines for decision-making that helps with avoiding decision fatigue, right? So if we're making, we make decisions every day, everything that we do, you are making decisions. You have made a decision to watch this. You maybe made a decision not to watch this. Um, you know, you make a decision when you put your clothes on, when you brush your teeth, when you're choosing the, what TV show to watch, we make decisions at every single moment of the day. Um, so the idea is to try and systemize as many of those decisions as possible or to make them in advance so you don't actually have to make decisions on the day. And instead, the decision is, oh, I have, I need to eat lunch soon. Oh, okay. It's like I already have the container in the fridge. I just need to heat it up, right? It's like at that point, the decision is simply, are you going to go and eat it now and heat it up or are you going to leave it there? Instead of what am I going to have for lunch? What's around? but I want this, I feel like that, you know, how am I going to prepare it and everything else that comes with that. Okay, so it can really help, obviously. I hopefully don't need to sell that too much more. There are some costs of planning um, and preparation, although hopefully they are negated mostly by the benefits, but <clears throat> here they are anyway. So it takes time to plan, right, to sit down, particularly for, you know, training and nutrition purposes to sit down and track out, you know, a day or a week's worth of food to, you know, work out what you need to do a week's grocery shop and then to prepare in advance and go and do meal prep. That takes time, um, you know, but I would say on the whole, it's probably going to be a more beneficial use of time than not planning and running into issues down the track and then wondering where it all went wrong. Another one and a problem that people often face is being too rigid with your plans, right? We need to plan to create rigidity, but also have flexibility within that plan, right? To account for, you know, life. Um, things don't always go to plan. We all know that and we've all experienced that. So having enough wiggle room in whatever your plan and preparation is to account for those things is a very important thing. Right, and if you don't account for it, then it can create problems. Right, so it might be, for example, you might be super prepared one week, you've made all your lunches, you know, you under, you're ready to go, <clears throat> and then you drive to work and go, Oh no, I've left my lunch at home. Well, what's the backup plan? Do you just go, Well, stuff it, I'm gonna go and eat, you know, from McDonald's because you know, I can't do this, it's all too hard, or do you go, Okay, if I don't. If I forget my lunch, my next best option is this, or I will keep these spare foods in my car or at the office so that if I'm in this situation, I can make that decision, right? If you're, again, too rigid, not enough flexibility, um, you're just simply not going to account for the things that do go wrong in life, um, and things always go wrong. So having that flexibility is super important. <clears throat> and lastly, having an on or off mentality, right? So it's like either you're planning and tracking everything and it's all to the T or it's nothing, throw your hands up, this is all too hard, I'm just going to do whatever, YOLO. Um, both of those mentalities are equally bad in my opinion. Um, the pendulum swings, so, you know, go really hard one direction, then, you know, that's unsustainable and it's going to just swing back to the other direction, right? So Oftentimes, again, we see in practice, if someone goes, I'm 100% on, I'm going to nail this, I'm absolutely, I'm tracking, I'm training, I'm doing everything, it's like I am 110% on, right? That is unsustainable long term because what it takes to sustain that comes at a cost, right? It's like if you're preparing and tracking absolutely everything, it's like that's, that's mentally taxing, right? Maybe you can't go out and eat a meal with your friends and family, you know, maybe you're not going out on the weekend and having a drink or, you know, you're never doing anything because all you're doing is preparing, planning, tracking and doing that. And then at some point you get burnt out and you go stuff it too hard, opposite end of the spectrum. And then all of a sudden there's no planning, no flexibility. We're just, it's all flexible. We're just doing whatever the hell we want, whenever we want. 
So again, moderation is key. Trying to find the middle ground will always be most beneficial. You don't need to be 100% on all of the time, but if you are 75% on, 100% of the time, you're going to get a lot further. You won't always be able to plan and prepare every single meal, but we need to understand when it is appropriate to do so and when it might not be. Okay, so if you are in a designated fat loss phase, maybe that's more of a priority. But, you know, if you're on holidays and your, your primary goal is to enjoy yourself and have a break, then maybe, you know, tracking, preparing, weighing out all your food or, you know, putting a lot of pressure on yourself to, you know, get to the gym and train and do these things, maybe that's not super appropriate. So, again, you need to align your planning and preparation with your, the phase you're in in your life. Um, and that will ultimately lead you to hopefully more success. So it goes without saying, I hope uh, planning has a lot of utility and a lot of benefit, uh, particularly in the world of training and nutrition. Uh, we can control variables. We can avoid you know, mistakes, hurdles, problems, whatever. Um, and ultimately, we can proceed in a way that will allow us to have confidence in what we are doing. So make sure you're planning, preparing, and getting ready in advance. And then all you have to do is execute that plan. And hopefully it's a decent enough plan and you'll get closer to your end goal. That is everything. Uh, as always, if you have comments, questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for listening. And I'll see you hopefully maybe next time.